Today on Health Spark, we're going to talk about habits, how to make them and how to break them. So stay tuned. Do you ever feel sick and tired of feeling sick and tired? Fed up with always having to have a plan B? in case you're not feeling well and you have to back out of or cancel plans and things that you were really looking forward to? Good. Get fed up. Get mad about the things that you've missed out on because of your illness. Get pissed about having to rely on others to take care of you or do things for you when you aren't feeling well. Because the truth is, change isn't easy. But it is easier when you are fed up with where you are right now and you make the decision, no more. The fact of the matter is, our brain wants to keep us safe. And so things that we've already done and lived through, it deems as safe and therefore it wants us to keep doing the same things over and over again because it knows that those things, at least up until this point, have been safe. And so chances are they will continue to be safe. But being sedentary and safe is slowly killing us. So you need to get sick and tired of being sick and tired in order to mentally take the leap. You need to make changes to your habits. Our life is simply the sum of our thoughts and our habits day in and day out. Change your habits, change your life. And today I'm gonna to go through some small, simple actions you can take to remove unhealthy habits and or add healthy habits into your daily routine. Last year, I read the book called Atomic Habits by James Clear, and it was life-changing for me. I love how the book broke things down into simple steps. And so today I'm going to share some of those steps with you so that you can begin today to create a life of vibrant health. The thing is, by making small changes and improvements every day, they compound over time to create a huge impact. If you change just 1% a day over the course of the year, you will be 37 times better than when you started. And sometimes a 1% change is so small that it may be unnoticeable or imperceptible, which is great because small changes are easier to maintain than taking large leaps. Now, if you're anything like me in the past, I had a lot of difficulty changing my habits. The good news is, if you're having trouble changing your habits, the problem isn't you, the problem is your system. When you want to start a new healthy habit, there are four things that you can do to help ensure that that habit sticks. The first thing you can do is make it obvious. My favorite way to start with a new habit is to write it down. The process of writing, reading it out to ourselves, as I talked about in a previous episode on mindset, it is telling your brain and body that this is important. And so your brain will put this into the front of its memory system, which means you're more likely to remember this habit that you're working on. And Putting it up somewhere around your house where you can see it regularly, again, will remind you of your goal, of what it is you are trying to achieve. Other ways to make it obvious is to tell people about it. Then you will have an accountability piece of people asking you how it's going. And one of my favorite ways of creating a new habit is to stack it with a previous habit. So about a month ago, I started making a habit of going outside first thing in the morning to get sunlight in my eyes. If you watched my previous episode on sleep and the importance of setting our circadian rhythm, then you know that this is one simple action that can really have a profound impact on the quality of your sleep. So every morning I go outside and I spend about 10 minutes sitting on my porch in the quiet and the calm and getting that morning sunlight into my eyes. And that habit has been going really well. And so then I decided I wanted to add another habit. I have 
always loved journaling, but have been very inconsistent at it. And so this was a habit I wanted to revisit in a consistent way. And so I decided to stack that habit with my habit of going outside in the morning for sunlight. So now by the door on my console table, I have my journal and my pen. And in my phone, I have a list of 30 journal prompts that are easy for me to access. And I actually am planning to just print them out and stick them in my journal because that will make it even more obvious. And so every morning when I go downstairs to go outside and get that sunlight, I grab my journal and my pen. I spend 10 minutes getting sunlight in my eyes. Then I open up my journal and I can add that practice to my daily routines. So stacking a new habit with one that you've already established is a great way to remember to, to add that habit in on a regular basis. The second way to make a new habit stick is to make it attractive. Some people like to gamify things or again, bundle or reward themselves for their new habit with something that they really enjoy. So again, for me, watching television is something that I have been consciously reducing. I have so many other uh, fun and amazing and great things I want to do. And I know that when I look back on my life in 20 years from now, I will never have said, gee, I wish I watched more television. And so mindfully, that is something that I have reduced quite a bit in my life. However, when I go for my walk on the treadmill, that is my indulgence. That makes me want to walk on the treadmill. I will bring my iPad and put on a TV show that I would like to watch. And so I find myself wanting to go for a walk on the treadmill because I want to see what's going to happen in the next episode of that show. That is a way where I'm stacking things together, a reward with the habit that I want to maintain so that that habit becomes more attractive. The next step is make it easy. Reduce the number of steps needed to complete that habit. So much like my new journaling habit, by placing my journal and my pen and my journal prompts near the door so that I can bring them out with me to stack them with a previous habit, makes it easy. I don't have to go around the house in the morning searching for where I put my journal, then rummaging around for a pen or pencil to write with, making sure if it's a pencil that it's sharpened, and then having to go and hunt for journal prompts or come up with a journal prompt in my mind on, on the spot. Those are all steps that would make it more difficult. And to be honest, there'd be mornings where I would probably just say, forget it. I can't come up with anything. I don't know what I wanna write about. I'm just gonna skip today. And that is how new habits can quickly break down. So by having everything in one place consistently and where I'm headed, it's right by the door, which is where I'm heading out when I bring my journal to write, I've made it easier. I've reduced the number of steps needed to create that new habit on a consistent basis. And the last step is to make it satisfying. And this is where a lot of great apps and, and things will create almost a gaming or point system. If you use MyFitnessPal, it will tell you how many days in a row you've logged your information, which is kind of like a chain. You don't wanna break the chain and you wanna make it as long as you can. And so those are ways to motivate yourself to do something healthy that will benefit you, but in a, a fun way to make it fun. For me, again, with the journaling, I write the date down because then I can see the dates in order and I know that I don't really wanna skip one because it's kind of like that itch you can't scratch. It's like breaking the chain. And so it's sort of a way of gamify gamifying my new habit to make it fun. Now, in thinking of these four steps for creating a new habit, we essentially just have to inverse those laws when we want to break a habit that is no longer serving us or that is unhealthy. So the opposite of making something obvious is to make it invisible. 
So for example, if I want to stop eating those potato chips, then I'm simply going to stop bringing them into my house so that if I really want them, I'm going to have to go out and buy a bag of them. And when I do that, I'm going to buy a small bag so that it is one serving, one and done, and I'm not tempted to continue to eat them the next day, the next day, or to binge an entire large bag while sitting around on the couch. The inverse law of step number two, which is making it attractive, is to make it unattractive. Sometimes this can be hard. If you're craving a certain food, it's really hard to make that delicious, satisfying dish unattractive. One way to do that is when you are not in a moment of craving, so when you're in a moment of clarity, is to write down all of the reasons why you don't want to have that food or engage in that habit, whether it's binging Netflix for hours on end or scrolling through your phone instead of spending time with family. So when you are removed from that habit, write down why it is not benefiting you to continue to do it. And perhaps write down all of the great things you could do instead. Finding other ways to reward yourself that are healthier or more in line with the goals and the person you want to become will help you to see that this current habit is less attractive and the other options available to you in that time that you are now gaining can be much more attractive. And step number three, the inverse law of make it easy is make it difficult. So again, like the potato chips, not having them in the house makes it invisible. I don't see them. So if I don't see them, it's not triggering my craving visually. And then if I do want them, there are a lot more steps. I don't have to just go out into the kitchen, open the pantry and start shoveling. I actually have to get in the car, put on my shoes, get in the car, drive to the store, purchase the chips and then head back home. So there are a lot more steps in the way of me and my unhealthy habit, which is going to make me more unlikely of continuing that habit, at least as the frequency will be reduced. And the last one, which I find interesting and I have yet to use is instead of making it satisfying, such as the gaming and the reward system and the points, make it unsatisfying. And some people do this by having an accountability partner and it doesn't have to be someone who is good at the thing that you want to do. So let's say you want to exercise more and so you want to stop watching so much TV. So you're going to set a goal, I'm only going to watch one hour of television a day. You could have someone be your accountability person tell them you're going to send them a log of what you've watched on TV every day. And if you exceed the one hour, every day you exceed it, you'll pay them $10, $20. Make it as painful as you need to if you really want to commit to breaking that habit. And I guarantee you that person will be happy to keep you accountable when there is something in it for them. But also, you will think twice when that hour rolls over before hitting next on your Netflix show, because you know it's gonna cost you and that makes it very unattractive. The truth is that our life is a lagging reflection of our habits. Your net worth is a lagging reflection of your financial choices. Your weight is a lagging reflection of the foods that you eat. Your clutter is a lagging measure of your cleaning habits and your knowledge a lagging measure of your learning habits. So when we change our habits, even a small amount over time, they accumulate and they change our life. Our current habits or behaviors are a reflection of our current beliefs. So if you change your beliefs, then you will change your behaviors. So first, you need to decide. decide what type of person you want to be. You are under no obligation to be the same person you were five minutes ago. We are dynamic, changing creatures. We're not trees, we're not stuck in one place. Our identity is ever evolving and changing. 
It can change for the better or it can change for the worse. We get to decide. And so by choosing the person that you want to be, you simply need to take actions to prove it to yourself. Every action is a vote towards the person you wish to be. And so when you think about your actions throughout the day, are you voting in favor of or against the person that you want to be? And by changing those actions, small actions, one at a time, over time, the vote will shift. And before you know it, your actions will be voting in favor of the person you want to be. And when that happens, you have become that person. I hope that you can take one small piece of info from today to create a new habit, to support your vibrant health, or to break one that is holding you back from experiencing the most healthy, amazing life yet. And until next time, stay healthy.